For competency number 6, we have solving problems involving quadratic equations. So let us have with the first example. Problem number 1. The sum of two numbers is 36 and their product is 180. You are about to find the numbers. In solving problems involving whatever kind of equation, we can follow different procedures for us to do it systematically. For the first one, we need to represent the unknown. In this case, we have two numbers. Those are the unknown. So using the variable x to represent the first number, how are we going to represent the second number? Knowing that the sum of two numbers is 36, how are we going to represent the second number? Yes, the second number can be represented as 36 minus x. It is because for whatever value of the first number is or whatever value of that x is, to identify the second number, you are just going to subtract it from 36 since based on the problem, their sum is 36. Did you get it? Okay, let us continue. The second one is you need to write the equation. You are going to base your equation from the, problem, from the problem itself. In the problem, it says that the product of the two numbers is 180. So meaning to say you are going to multiply the first number and the second number. And if you do that, then the equation will become x multiplied by 36 minus x. And if you multiply the two numbers based on the problem, it is equal to 180. So that is our equation based on the given problem. The third thing that you are going to do is to simplify the equation and then you solve it. To simplify, we have x Multiply the quantity 36 minus x equals 180. What property you are going to use here? Yes, you are going to use distributive property. So you have x times 36, that's 36x. And then x times negative x, that is negative x squared. And then equals 180. So we have negative x squared plus 36x, we just rearrange and write the quadratic term first. And then using addition property of equality, we have now here minus 180. But take note, we have a negative x here. What are you going to do to make it positive? Yes, it's either you divide all terms by negative 1 or you simply multiply the whole equation by negative 1. If you do that, either of the two, then the resulting equation will become x squared minus 36x plus 180. What happened here? Yes, we just changed the sign of all of our terms. Then we have now the quadratic equation. It says you simplify and then you are going to solve. Let us now solve x squared minus 36x plus 180. This one is factorable, so we can factor it out. The correct factors are quantity x minus 30 and quantity x minus 6. Again, negative 30 times negative 6 is positive 180. Negative 30 plus negative 6 is negative 36. So those are the correct factors. Addition property, I, zero product property, equate by zero. Then addition property of equality, our x sub 1 is 30 and our x sub 2 is 6. Then the last one, since you already solved the problem, you are now ready to answer the problem. What is asked in the problem? You are asked to define or to identify the two numbers. Therefore, the numbers are 6 and 30. If you add 30 plus 6, the sum is 36. If you multiply 6 times 30, the product is 180. Therefore, our answer is correct. Did you get it? For our problem number 2, let us have this one. Katrin can type a report in 3 hours less than Liza can finish the same report. If both girls work on the report together, they can finish the job in 2 hours. How long would it take each of them working alone? 
Now, between Katrin and Liza, who can work faster? Yes, Katrin works faster than Liza. By how? By? By three hours. So if Liza can finish the job, for example, in 10 hours, how long can Katrin finish it? Yes, Katrin can finish it in seven hours. But we do not know yet how Liza or how long can Liza finish the job. So we need to solve the given problem. Again, we need to represent the unknown. If Liza will be represented by X, how are you going to represent Katrin? Yes, Katrin will be represented as X minus 3 because Katrin type 3 hours less than Liza. And also, since this is a work problem, the work to be done by the two is represented by 1. So we will be having here, writing the equation. This will be our equation. We have 1 over x plus 1 over x minus 3 equals 1 over 2. Now, where did we get this equation? 1 over x is the part of work done by Lysa because lan is represented by x. And then we have 1 over x minus 3 is the part of work done by Katrin because Katrin is represented by x minus 3 and 1 is the work to be done. It will be equal to 1 half. What do we mean by this 1 half? This is the part of the work done together. So this is the part of Liza. This is the part of Katrin. And then they work together. That's how it works. So this is our equation. What are we going to do is to simplify it and then you are going to solve. Yes, we have here a rational algebraic equation. Again, to solve rational algebraic expression or equation, we need to get the LCD. And the LCD here is 2x multiplied by the quantity x minus 3, which we are going to multiply to the whole equation. If we do that, that will be the result. What happened here? If you multiply the LC2 to the first term, which will be canceled out. Yes, you are going to cancel out x. That's why we have the remaining 2 quantity x minus 3. Then multiplying the LCD to our second term, what will be eliminated? Yes, you are going to cancel out x minus 3. So what's left is? What's left is 2x. And then multiplying our LCD to the last term, what will be canceled out? Yes, 2 will be canceled out. So the remaining will be x multiplied by x minus 3. Then you need to simplify. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. You just copy plus 2x. And then distributive property again x times x is x squared, and then x times negative 3 is negative 3x. From here, what are we going to do next? Okay, we write everything on the right side, so we have the remaining 0 on the left. Now, why did we choose to write everything on the right side? So that our quadratic equation or our quadratic term will remain positive. Because most of the time, if the student saw a negative number, they tend to, to commit an error. To so to refrain from having a negative, we just combine everything on the right side. So we have here x squared minus 3x. We write it here. And then you have here negative 4x. Where did we get it? Yes, we have 2x here. And then another 2x there. That is equal to positive 4x. But since you use addition property of equality, we write it on the other side. That's why it became negative 4x. And then the negative 6 here, in the same manner, will become positive. Now, this expression can be written or can be simplified. Negative 3x minus 4x is equal to negative 7x. This expression can be written as this one x squared minus 7x plus 6 equals 0. 
This is our resulting quadratic equation and that is the equation that we are going to solve. Solving it, x squared minus 7x plus 6 equals 0. This one again is factorable. What are the correct factors? Very good. The correct factors are x minus 6 and x minus 1. Equating each factor by 0 so that x sub 1 is 6 and x sub 2 is 1. Now, where there are two values of x, x is Lysa's work. Which among these two is acceptable? Can we accept 1? Definitely not. Because if Lysa can do it in one hour, knowing that Katrin is three hours less than Lysa, we will be having negative two. Do we have such thing as negative two hours? Okay, there is no such thing as negative time. That is why we are going to consider x sub 2 equals 1 as an extraneous root. Again, it is an extraneous root simply because this value that we arrive or that we get will not satisfy our problem. Therefore, it means to answer the problem, working alone, Lysa and Katrin can finish the job in 6 and 3 hours respectively. Since the value of x is 6, meaning to say, Lysa can finish it in 6 hours. And since Katrin is x minus 3, 6 minus 3, Katrin can finish the job in 3 hours. Did you get it? Okay, I hope so. Let us have problem number 3 for our last example. The perimeter of a rectangular metal plate is 36 decimeter and its area is 80 square decimeter. Find its dimensions. Definitely, the dimensions that we are talking here are the length and the width. But according to the problem, let us relate the measures to the sum and the product of the quadratic equation. How are we going to do that? Okay, knowing that the perimeter is 36 decimeter, there we have here 36 decimeter. We all know that to get the perimeter, that is twice the sum of the length and the width. And since our perimeter is 36, then we will be having 36 equals twice the sum of length and width. To simplify our equation, what are you going to do? What do you think we will be doing? Very good. You are going to divide each term by 2. So this will be cancelled out. Therefore, we will be having length plus width. We have L plus W and then 36 divided by 2 is 18. So we have L plus W equals 18. That is our first equation. The second one, another given is the area is 80 square decimeter. Knowing that the area is length times width and the area is given, which is 80, meaning to say, okay, therefore the area is 80. This is the sum of the roots. And then this will be the product of the roots because the area is length times width. As we use the sum and product of roots in finding the quadratic equation, again, you are going to follow the concept x squared minus sum of roots together with the value variable x plus the product of roots equals zero. Substituting our sum and our product, then we will be having x squared minus 18x plus 80 equals zero. This is our resulting equation. The next thing that we are going to do is to solve it, so we will be having the factors x minus 10 and x minus 8. Again, negative 10 times negative 8 is positive 80. Negative 10 plus negative 8 is negative 18. So those are the correct factors. Equate each factor by 0, then solve for x. x sub 1 is 10 and x sub 2 is 8. We are now ready to answer the problem, this is x, 
x sub 1, this is x sub 2, these are actually the dimensions. Therefore, the dimensions are 10 decimeters and 8 decimeters. For us to know if these are correct, let us check. If we are going to get the perimeter, knowing that the dimensions are 10 and 8, so the length is 10 and the width is 8, 10 plus 8 is 18, 18 times 2 is 36, and that is our perimeter, and there is our perimeter based on the problem. So it is correct. But we need to check using the area. The area is length times width. Again, the length is 10, the width is 8, multiply the 2, therefore the area is 80. Is it correct? Yes, because based on the problem, the area is 80 square decimeter. Therefore, again, the answer, the dimensions are 10 decimeter and 8 decimeter. I hope you get all the three problems clearly. So again, to solve word problems, you may follow the following. You can represent the unknown. You write the equation. You simplify the equation and solve it. And then, of course, you need to answer what is asked in the problem. But then again, some of the solution that will emerge may be eliminated simply because if we are going to substitute it to the problem, it will give us an invalid solution. So that is all about competency number six. Thank you again for watching. This is Mom, Mom Ferrer. Goodbye and God bless.